Hi, uh, welcome back to PTR 3134, the course and specs in petroleum industries, um, to the module 3 class lecture. Um, the today's class will actually learn on the piping components. The valve, it's a continuation from the module 2. Uh, we actually learned on different pipeline components, including flanges. Um, that uh, now this uh, turn will actually learn a very important part. Uh, I mean, very important uh, things about the piping components, uh, which is uh, valve. So, at the part one, we'll learn on the valves, and the part two, we'll actually learn on the pumps, which is another very, very important um, part. Okay, so valves. So valves are used to <clears throat> control of uh, volume and pressure of fluid moving through the piping or its enclosed vessel. So for instance, uh, you have a piping system and you need to control the flow. So how you can actually control the flow? The best way to control the flow is to, to use the valve. Okay, so valve actually uh, control what the volume and the pressure. Okay, uh, so valve may be operated automatically or by hand. Most of the common example of uh, valve by hand is like the it's like the water tap, right? You have the water tap uh, here. looks like that so water is coming in and you press open the valve and the water is going out so this is one of the most common example of the valve so how how the automatic valve actually works um, have you gone to the mall or any any uh, fancy washrooms and you find like there's a sensor and you put your hands in here and the um, Tap automatically opens okay why because they have a sensor in here a motion sensor something okay so that actually automatically work so this is the rudimentary concept of the automatic valve but uh, actually in industry we use I mean in bigger scale like we have a big uh, uh, industrial valve and that's been actuated with the computer systems I mean the central computer system and based on our set point the valve actually open and close okay so this is how the um, the control valve we call this control valve so this actually works so we'll actually learn it through that later uh, but let's learn the types of valve so we have several types of valves in here we'll actually discuss the most important types like the gate valves globe valves check valves ball valve butterfly needle and the PRV or pressure relieving valves. So each of the valves got its own different um, components uh, on different usage and its uh, limitations. So we'll actually learn about all this, okay? So gate valve. The principle is gate valve is very, very simple. Okay, so there's a sluice like a gate in here. Okay, so if you uh, take it up, then it will go up, all the fluids actually go, and when you actually want to close it, uh, this uh, 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 valve will actually go down, okay? So this uh, flat actually goes uh, perpendicular. So its motion is perpendicular, either up or down, okay? So the gate valve that utilizes a flat inserts that travel perpendicular to the flow, system okay why do we use globe valve uh, sorry uh, gate valve why we use gate valve because uh, gate valve have very few pressure drop why because if you see the system then you'll find in gate valve the major component is very low like I mean when when it's open it's like in this way so the valve itself don't hamper the, the natural flow much okay and when it's closed is closed okay so 
Uh, that's exactly why uh, gate valve has a uh, very few pressure drops so that's why we use glow valve widely but we can only use for on and off options like there is no intermediate like i mean half open get valve we don't use that okay so get valve is useful for handling slurries like drilling mart okay it's very important at the drilling mart we uh, use the gate valves they're also applied in viscous liquid service okay but remember um the gate valve mostly we use for the on and off application okay not control application globe valve so this is the schematic of globe valve as you can see it's kind of like a little bit complicated so there is a, a structure portions in here and globe valve that's actually goes also up or down that means um, the fluid will go in this way and enter in here and pass all around that valve and comes in okay. or comes in like in this way so there are like I mean two different settings uh, so glow valve has a rounded body okay through which the fluid traverses through a circuitous path Okay, so it has the, the circuitous path and go. So glow valve got more pressure drop, remember. Okay, to a fully open glow valve than a similar gate valve or ball valve. Okay, so glow valve got more pressure drop than a gate valve or ball valve if, if all these valves are fully open. Okay, glow valves may be used for on and off or throttling application that means control applications for liquid or gases but in most cases we actually use gas uh, because of the high pressure drop since glue valve got the high pressure drop we mostly use gas okay we can also use liquid but the low pressure liquid sorry the, um, the, <clears throat> the, there will be a significant pressure drop on the liquid okay but uh, in cases of like the gas, uh, the pressure drop is relatively lower than the liquid in, in uh, using the glow valve, okay? So the glow valve has a direction arrow, okay? When you actually install the glow valve, you have to follow this direction. There is a direction like in this direction, the flow is actually going in. If you actually install in reverse way, that won't work, okay? So you have to uh, know like which is the flow direction and through that direction, you should actually um, you should actually install the casing uh, and that okay check valve check valves are a type of valve that prevent the backflow of the fluid okay uh, for instance at the pump uh, we use check valves uh, for the priming system okay so the check valve may cause damage to a pump by turning impeller wrong direction sometimes okay so excessive use of check valve should be avoided okay i mean we can use just a one check valve uh, but i mean if you use excessive check valves uh, especially i mean if the check valve is in the top direction and uh, pump is at the bottom then due to the gravity the fluids will be coming in and impeller can rotate in a different i mean the reverse position that that would be a, another problem we'll actually learn about these things how actually this impeller works how this uh, uh this uh, pressure head and these things actually work but just remember like the check valve is used to just to prevent the backflow okay so check valve also got a, a direction arrow supplied to the valve body to indicate the direction of the flow that means based on this direction you have to install the check valve okay um ball valve so the principle of the ball valve is very simple so we have a ball okay like a 3d shape of the ball like this and there's a hollow inside the ball okay so this is that ball here now the ball valve may be used in liquid or gas service and we remember it may also used for the throttling application okay so what is the throttling application throttling application means 
The valve can be used for start, stop or regulate the flow, the fluid through a pump. Okay, so the ball valve is a, is a metal with a hole drilled through it through which the fluids flows. Okay, only when the hole is originated with the axis of the valve. That means if the hole is in this way perpendicular to the flow direction there will be no flow because here you will only find the middle okay so the fluid will stop but if you rotate and the hole is in this direction the same direction with the uh, suppose this is the bow uh, the same direction with the flow then the flow will continue okay so that's how if you rotate that's how this ball valve actually work. Pretty simple um, application, but it is a, uh, the principle is simple, but it's a wide application of that. And lots of like uh, water taps actually are the ball valves. We use the water taps, uh, give you the example previously, mostly we use the ball valve, okay. Um, butterfly valve, butterfly valves, uh, its name is butterfly valve because it looks like a butterfly, like it's a disc and it's a handle to the disc like that so the butterfly valve consists of a disc through uh, which rotates inside the body and form a seal against the elastomeric or the middle seat okay so this is the butterfly valve these valves are very versatile you can use for uh, throttling application too or like on and off application uh, for the liquid and gas uh, but butterfly valves are used I mean when there's a short takeouts uh, and comparatively lower cost uh, <clears throat> ordinarily they're not intended for like the tight shut off okay that means like for high pressure uh, you cannot use that um, or like I mean tight shut off because the, the thickness of this of this power is not much to withstand with the high pressure okay so that's one case and another case is like the ceiling is not that packed okay so that's why it's uh, for like the water is okay but for like I mean chemical dosing or like I mean using in the gas industry for instance gas transmission pipeline no you cannot use the bat, uh, butterfly valve Pressure relieving valve or PRV. So, pressure vessel like a boiler, okay, required by ASME boiler and pressure vessel code to protect from the overpressurization by a relieving device. What is that? That means, for instance, you've got a boiler, and that boiler, uh, the design pressure is, for instance, 10 bar, okay. So, if it go beyond to the 10 bar, then there should be a type of valve that set open at the 10 bar pressure and it, uh, if it's uh, continue build up more pressure then it will release some steam for instance okay and uh, reduce the pressure uh, and set it to the 10 again for instance uh, the design is 10 bar but inside it's 11 bar okay so at that time the PRV will activate, re release some steam and set it back again to 10 bar, okay. So that is the main purpose of this uh, PRV or pressure relieving valves to prevent damage from the overpressurization, okay. So uh, how the PRV is defined, it is defined as a pressure relief device designed to enclose, sorry, reclose and prevent further flow. Or fluid uh, after a normal condition has been restored okay so this is a very important piece of equipment for the, uh, for the process industry especially at the boiler and uh, any kind of like pressure vessels okay so this is how the PRV actually what is the working function of a PRV so there's a spring uh, weight so there's a counterweight actually in here uh, to withstand with the set pressure okay and when the pressure actually is beyond to the set pressure, then this inner mechanism 
opens and the fluid actually comes through and goes in this way and when the pressure has been restored this counterweight actually starts uh, activated and sealed the uh, valve again okay so this is this is how this uh, uh, this is the specification of the uh, PRV actually work okay so as we boiler uh, and pressure vessel code the section 8 requires the PRVs for any service over uh, 140 degree Fahrenheit all right now the functions the function of the valves so what are the function of the valves we have learned like uh, lots of different styles of the valve so what is actually do the function of the valves are to start and stop the flow regulating a throttling flow preventing backflow and relief pressure okay so what is uh, throttling flow or regulating flow we we know like i mean what is start and stop flow like i mean the gate valve for instance it start and stop if you uh, shut down the valve it will stop and if you open the valve it will uh, start the flow but what is throttling or regulating Throttling or the regulating application is like an automatic uh, uh, is set for the automatic valve. Okay, so um, we call it control valves. So the control valves is like the, when the valves are large size, difficult to operate within the flow conditions, or the like located in inaccessible position, require rapid opening, closing or needed to be operated remotely from the central control area or even like i mean you don't have much manpower to uh, open the uh, open and close the valves uh, every single time and uh, in a harsh weather so you need a control valve you need a, a valve that actually operated by the machines automatically okay so so how you can do that like the power actuated operators are frequently installed on these valves and known as control valve okay what is an actuator so the actuator translate the control signal from one form or level to energy or power or to another so for instance from pneumatic signal to a mechanical action which is manipulate for the control variable so um, what's happened actually uh, for instance this uh, this is this is a control valve for instance okay now here uh, the control valve actually works through the air pressure we call it pneumatic pressure okay so pneumatic pressure now this air pressure is actually do the mechanical actions in here to uh, the to shut off the seal or to open it up okay so it's done by the pneumatic pressure just like your car brake actually works with the pneumatic pressure okay now um, this uh, pneumatic pressure I mean this actually uh, connected uh, through an actuator and it goes to the uh, uh, DCS or PLC, like the uh, like the uh, uh, the control control system, like distributed control system. Okay, and from there the operators they sit in the computer. Okay, and they have, they actually give the uh, signal like I mean, okay, turn the valve on. And at that time, what's happened? Um, you give the electric signal, and that electric signal, I mean, that's mainly the voltage difference, they actually go to the up actuator and it gives the signal, then okay, uh, you should actually turn on the valve, okay? And then the pneumatic pressure starts working, and then this mechanical works, like the shaft actually starts working and uh, uh, close in like shut off the valve or open the valve okay so this is how the control valve actually works and most in most of the industrial cases now we'll find all valves or the control valves usually okay so uh, here is the pnid symbols 
for the valves and the pipings. Uh, these are very important. Please go through the PNID symbols, especially uh, these like PNID symbol for the valves. Okay. Others probably you don't need right now. Okay. But at least like the PNID symbol for the I mean symbols for all the valves. Uh, like I mean, for instance, this one. Okay. If I give this symbol, so what is uh, what type of valve this is? This is a globe valve, right? So that's the thing you actually uh, have need to know what, what type of valve are these. Okay. So this is very important. Uh, the instrumentation and logic on the PID, PNID is developed by the International Society of Automation or ISA. So this is uh, all about uh, today's lecture on valve. Now, in our second part, uh, we'll actually learn on pumps. So the pump selection and application. So pump actually has a wide uh, application in, in process industries, uh, not only uh, constrained to the oil and gas or petroleum industries, also in manufacturing process, even at the household applications, there are a lot of application of the pumps, uh, okay? So the first thing we need to know, what are the types of the pumps available in the market, okay? Uh, what are the working principles of those types? Uh, if we know this um, um, information at that time, we can actually select the type of pump we need for our application okay so when you actually want to select a particular uh, application of the pump what are the factors we need to consider we need to consider the nature of the liquid to be pumped liquid or could be gas okay uh, or the vapor uh, for instance for petroleum application the pump you would use will not the same pump you will use for like the chemical dosing or the slurry or like the mud okay much circulation uh, or mud is the drilling fluid or not for the water for instance okay why because each of the liquids got their own properties mud is way more denser uh, than the water or like the crude oil is way more viscous than the water okay so these are the uh, differences we have and, and for instance for the acid acid is way more corrosive than the normal like a uh, Truly, so that's exactly why we have to select. I mean, the uh, right type of pump and the right size of pump. Okay, so when we talk about the size, it comes the capacity. So what to do with the volumetric flow rate? Okay, uh, what are the condition like the inlet condition? Like I mean, how much pressure on the inlet side and how much pressure you want for the outlet side? Okay, you want. Uh, you want very high pressure or you want a low pressure you want more you want less uh, what would be the total head of the pump okay what would be the uh, what type of system the pump is delivering fluid to is it a, like i mean very complex piping system or it's a, like i mean a straightforward piping system or there will be lots of valves or something what would be the type of the main power source the space weight and the positions okay the environmental conditions the cost which is very important the cost of pump operation now what are the existing government codes and standards and the legislation so all these actually affect on when you actually select a pump so upon this uh, lecture you will have pretty better idea like what type of pump we would use in what types of application okay so when you have selected the pump okay so you know what type of pump you actually uh, want to select so what are the other informations you need to be specified you need to specify the type of pump and the manufacturer size the suction connection type okay flange screwed you know the uh, piping components by now okay the size and type of the discharge connection uh, operation speed specification for driver like it would be electric motor what would the power requirement frequency in the or like the AC adapters voltage speed phase and etc uh, what are the coupling types like the mechanical uh, uh, casings, volutes, and the couplings, and um, what are the um, manufacturer, the model number, the mounting details, 
okay the special material like uh, if needed and the soft uh, seal design of the seal material so all these informations you need to specify after you select the pump okay now let's learn like i mean the types of the pump so there are mainly two major type of pump okay one is the positive displacement another is the kinetic type so positive displacement pump also got other two major types rotary and the reciprocating and the kinetic pump uh, it is mainly got three different types we will also call it like a different uh, like radial flow or centrifugal pump axial flow or the propeller pump and the mixed flow mixed of these two so mainly the radial and axial these are the two different types of kinetic and um, and in most cases we actually use the centrifugal pump i mean the kinetic pump needs to know by the centrifugal you know i mean in like 30 to 80 percent cases we actually use the centrifugal pumps uh, uh for the kinetic pump purpose okay but in case of positive displacement uh, displacement pump we have the reciprocating actions like the piston uh, plunger or diaphragm mostly we use piston in this case um, probably you have seen these types of pumps before like the action is like this like the, uh, some inlet taking in compress and taking out taking in and taking out like that okay the tube oil is one of the example of the positive displacement piston type of pump okay I mean the uh, reciprocating positive reciprocating action of the positive displacement piston type of pump in case of rotary uh, positive displacement we got a gear pump vein screw type uh, lobe producing cavity or flexible tube okay so we'll actually discuss about these types so what is a positive displacement pump let's talk about the positive displacement pump at first so positive displacement pump uh, ideally deliver fixed quantity of the fluid with uh, each revolution of the pump or for the each uh, displacement of the pump okay uh, most of the positive displacement pump can handle liquids over the wide region of viscosities uh, some examples are the examples we already have given right now the performance data of positive uh, displacement pump the operating characteristics of the positive displacement pump makes them useful for handling what types of fluid like water hydraulic fluid oil or the fluid power system or chemical dosing in the process industries some disadvantage of uh, some uh, positive displacement pump is the pulsing output like it's not continuous like the uh, centrifugal pump it's uh, it's kind of like i mean pulsing okay like this you get a high flow no flow high flow no flow flow no flow like that okay susceptibility to damage by solids or abrasive uh, it's very important like i mean if in the liquid if there is any solid or any abrasive type uh, the, the, there could be a mechanical failure okay and positive displacement pump actually works for the very high pressure sometimes so you need uh, relief valve for that okay so there's some few examples like of the positive displacement pump like vein the screw type lobe okay this is the piston action okay so reciprocating in gas comes in then reciprocating out gas comes out in there okay so sorry in gas comes out and when it comes in again gas, gas comes in in here or liquid comes in in here so this is the reciprocating action actually it does like that so this is the single acting this is a double acting reciprocating um, and uh, this is called simplex and this is the duplex and this is a diaphragm types of uh, positive displacement pump okay now the performance of uh, of a reciprocating pump so <clears throat> in the positive displacement pump what is the performance of the reciprocating okay how actually reciprocating pump works so reciprocating pump is the simplest form and uh, it employs a piston draws the fluid to the cylinder just like the injection okay you know the at the medical purpose we use the injection is the same 
uh, principle, right? Uh, it states the needle. If you draw the piston in, the fluid will come in, and if you take it out, the fluid will go out, okay? So, the piston moves forward and takes the valve closed, and the fluid pushed out through the discharge valve. The pump is called simplex, and curve discharge looks like this. So if it's a simplex type, okay, then the curve will actually looks like this. Discharge, intake, discharge, intake, discharge, intake, like that, okay. But if you got like, I mean, uh, duplex, okay, then uh, there are two reciprocating action actually works together. So when you actually do the uh, intake, so one starts intake, another starts discharge, and the second action, one ter start discharging, another takes the intake, okay? So that's why it is more like a frequent intake, discharge, discharge, intake, side one, discharge, and at that time side two is intaking, and when side two is intaking, side one was discharging, like that, okay? This is how the uh, duplex the anti-programming pump works. Now, uh, how the rotary pumps for the positive displacement pump actually works. So, rotary pump, uh, at the next slide you will see, like the typical performance curve for the rotary pumps. Um, the uh, pump plot, it is uh, the capacity efficiency and the power versus the discharge pressure. As the pressure increase, there's a slight decrease in the capacity due to the internal leakage of the high pressure side to the low pressure side, okay? So if there is the uh, pressure increment, so the capacity could decrease, okay, for the rotary pump. Uh, the volumetric efficiency is a measurement of the ratio of the volume flow rate delivered by the pump uh, to the theoretical delivery based on the displacement per revolution of the pump uh, times the speed of the uh, rotation, okay? Uh, so, uh, this is how the capacity, the pump capacity for the rotary pump works. This is the discharge pressure, and this is the pump capacity. So, as we can see, the pump capacity actually decreases with the discharge pressure, okay? Why? Because if you have more, a bigger capacity, uh, it's uh, actually have a, a problem uh, with uh, with operating uh, at the on the very high discharge pressure. Okay, because because the volumetric efficiency uh, becomes uh, becomes uh, lower too. Okay, so as the pressure increases, there's a slight decrease in capacity. Why? Due to the internal leakage from high pressure side to the low pressure size. Okay, so remember that. And the volumetric efficiency also decreases with the discharge pressure. Okay, but the overall efficiency actually uh, increases. And the power input, absolutely. And the more discharge pressure you need, the more input power you actually need. Okay, so this is the from 0 to 2000 psi. The, uh, performance curve for the rotary pump, okay? All right, so let's talk about the kinetic pump right now, okay? So the kinetic pump uh, adds the energy uh, to the uh, fluid by accelerating it through the action of a rotary impeller. Most important, thing, it's called heart of the kinetic pump. Remember that impeller is the heart of the kinetic pump. Okay. Now the radial flow, uh, the centrifugal pump is the most common type of kinetic pump. Okay. Centrifugal pump, remember I told you before. The fluid drawn is drawn from the center of the impeller and then uh, thrown outward by the vents. Leaving the impeller, the fluid passes through the spiral-shaped volume where it gradually slowed down and causing the part, the kinetic energy, to be converted to the fluid pressure. 
Uh, I'll show you that it is schematic, but the thing actually works like uh, when the impeller, it's a disc type, okay, with uh, the, the shape. So when the fluid is actually coming through it, it the impeller is impeller actually moves in like a very high speed, high revolution, okay. It's actually uh, rotating a very high revolution. So what's happened when the fluid is actually coming in? The impeller moves and fluid got the kinetic energy all right and then it is released to the pump's volute there's a there's a space we call pump volutes and there it converts to the fluid pressure and then moved out so it works like the same principle okay so it's passed to the spiral shaped volute and then gradually slowed a little bit and causing the part of kinetic energy to convert it to the fluid pressure okay so in here um, the first step the fluid actually coming in and impeller convert the fluid to the I mean in, in, impeller increase the fluid's uh, kinetic energy and then at the volume to this part of this kinetic energy convert it to the pressure energy and moves to the outlet okay so the there is the uh, main working principle for the radial flow centrifugal pump but the propeller type pump or the axial flow depends on the hydrodynamic action of the propeller blade um, to lift or accelerate the fluid axially along a uh, path parallel to the axis of the Propeller. One of the examples of this type would be um, the problem there a lot, but um, like um, let me com air compressor, they use the propellers. Okay, so that could be one of the examples actually. Um, so this is the type of pump the centrifugal pump okay so this is the main working principle of the centrifugal pump so this is a how we call it multi-stage centrifugal pump and its motor so motor actually rotate this impeller okay so this is the radial flow impeller the heart of the centrifugal pump so the motor is a driving force for the impeller so when the impeller moves very fast so this is the impeller okay so what's happened the motor is actually there's a shaft and this motor is actually moving to the impeller so what happens the fluid actually go inside it goes to the impeller it moves and get the kinetic energy and from this volute it get the pressure energy and goes out so this sorry this is the volute here and goes out okay so this is how actually it works so uh, this is an example of the radial flow impeller and the mixed flow impeller and the axial flow impeller okay so the radial flow the fluid comes in and the impeller it moves and it goes through this volute and then it's go out it's the uh, mixed flow how the mixed flow actually works and the propeller pipe okay so there's a propeller fluid coming in goes out at the jet liners okay at the air or jet liners this is a type of like i mean propeller we use sometimes uh, for so it's the same working principle actually so very i mean various types of the kinetic pumps i mean there are some other varieties by uh, by type actually so the major varieties are like the centrifugal pumps or, and uh, propeller type those are pumped by the internal mechanism but these varieties or these examples are for different uh, working purpose okay so this is uh, this is based on the, the types actually we use so we have jet pumps submersible small centrifugal pump self-priming pump vertical tubing pump or grind pump so this is an example of the jet pump how it actually works and the shallow well jet pumps the submersible pump works like in this way okay so the suction is uh, through here 
it's a strainer so that I mean when you actually put it under the water uh, the dirt particles cannot coming in so only the water will be coming in and it will go out okay uh, this is a self priming pump so this is a suction inlet uh, impeller the mechanical shafts uh, sorry mechanical seal shaft is the shaft and this is the volute okay so a small centrifugal pump it's a uh, I mean these small centrifugal pumps actually used in the appliances not in the oil and gas industry mostly like I mean you know um, dishwasher or like the washing machines get the small centrifugal pumps actually performance performance data for the centrifugal pump very very important centrifugal pumps are not like the positive displacement pump so there is a strong dependency between the capacity and the pressure must be de developed by this pump okay so at the at the uh, positive displacement pump you've seen like okay yeah uh, when the capacity increases, the pressure actually decreases a little bit um, in, in, in case of positive displacement pump, but not too much. But in case of centrifugal pump, there's a huge relationship with that. We'll actually see. And sometimes these performance ratings are more complex. Okay. And the typical rating curve plots with the total head. We'll learn what are the heads. Okay. What are the total heads of the pump? versus the capacity or the discharge Q, okay, at the figure shown at the next slide. So the capacity versus total head. Remember, total head means the pressure, okay, total pressure. Uh, we call, also call it TDH, total dynamic head, anyways. So total head, TDH, or the total pressure represents the amount of energy added to unit weight uh, of the fluid passed through the pump. All right so here is the relationship like the pressure versus pump capacity so the more the pressure actually increase the pump capacity actually got like this relationship that means in here the total head was uh, pressure head was 150 feet that means very high pressure the pump capacity was some, somewhat like I mean 400 gallon per minute but in case of like 2000 gallon the total head actually decreased okay so this is a relationship between the total head and the pump capacity remember that okay so the efficiency and the power requirement are also very important for the successful operation of the pump okay so we have learned about here the, the, uh, the head versus pressure but in the next slide we'll actually learn on the efficiency versus pump capacity okay so the rating of the pump on the head efficiency power curves the normal operation should be the vicinity of the peak of the efficiency curve and in most cases 60 to 80 percent for the centrifugal pump so here's the pump capacity okay and the total head and the efficiency and the power requirement okay so we can see a very complex relationship because the pump capacity and the total head we have seen this curve already but this is the efficiency versus power that means if you increase more efficiency then the more power you need which makes sense okay so this is the um, so you need to find the sweet spot Okay, you don't want to waste lots of money on the power, but you need a better head and the better efficiency. All right, so based on that, if you actually see like that during the, uh, you remember the side 60 to 80 percent in, in this range, at this range of efficiency belt, okay, you see the, there's a cut set that means kind of like finding like. Uh, an optimum point what would be like the uh, the pump should be like that I mean it's not like at this point you will find the pump is most desirable type but mostly it's actually based in on this area like the sweet spot but it totally depends on your uh, in your type of operation you actually need okay 
So the diagram at the next slide shows the composite reading chart, the composite reading chart for the one line of the palm. Uh, there's a large clearance between the rotating impeller casing of the pump, like how, how big is the casing would be. Uh, so this decreased, like the capacity decreased as uh, increment of the total head. We know that already, okay. So here is a, is a, is a complex, uh, so I know, like uh, it actually shows the same curve, like the total head versus capacity, but for different types of casing size okay that means different size of the pump like very small size pump to a very big size pump okay so and when you know the size after that you can actually from using this uh, chart you can uh, know like I mean, how much power you would need uh, for that kind of size so uh, this is another very important chart for, uh, and this is for the impeller speed 3500 so what if you change the impeller speed okay if you if you need a different different speed of the impeller so at that point you need to use uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, chart like I mean the effect of impeller size to the to the varying to the total head okay so that means impeller size um, so size based on the size of the impeller, you can actually vary the speed and then you can actually calculate like the total head. So impeller size will give you uh, another rough idea like how how big the pump could be, all right? So the more, the bigger the impeller size, the greater the pressure heads and also greater the capacity you have, okay? So for instance, if the largest capacity of six inch impeller size would be how much? 200, 300 gallon, uh, 225 gallon per minute. But in case of uh, 10 inch, for instance, it will be like, I mean, 425 gallon per minute, something like that, okay? That's why the impeller size is also very, very important in case of uh, 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 sizing the centrifugal pump. Uh, codes um, we have for the, uh, for the pumps, um, uh, the codes and standards like the ASME or NC code uh, B73.1 uh, it gives like the horizontal instruction centrifugal pump for the chemical process and 73.2 is a vertical inline centrifugal pumps for the chemical process and API NC API uh, they actually give the standard for uh, especially for the centrifugal pumps for petroleum and petrochemical and natural gas industries, so which is uh, API standard 610, which is very identical to the ISO 1379, 13709. Okay, uh, the same under the same title, the centrifugal pumps for petroleum and petrochemical and natural gas industry. Okay. So these are the, some I mean some examples of like the APA standard uh, six one nine. How these? Uh, oh sorry, uh, six one zero. I made a big mistake. Um, APA standard six one zero. The centrifugal pumps for petroleum, petrochemical, and natural gas industry. So this is a single stage types of pump. This is like two stage pump. Uh, the BB1 is the OH1. Uh, this is the radially split two stage pump BB2. This is the axially split multi stage pump or the radially split multi stage pump. In many cases, we use radially split, split multi stage pump. This one in, in uh, not only oil and gas industry, in, in uh, chemical, petrochemical process industry, you'll find a lots of uses of this BB4 radially split multi stage pump. Okay. Sometimes we use the actually split, but mostly we use the radially split multi-stage pump. All right, and it's that's uh, if you need a vertical suspender. So this is the vertical suspended pump. These types of pump we also used uh, sometimes, especially like if you have a drum or uh, like the vessel and you've got like the uh, fluids, then the pump actually installed like vertically. Uh, to suction from there and take it out okay so for in that purpose 
So, so this is um, the um, lecture we have learned uh, about the valves and the pumps today. And I hope like uh, uh, this will actually give you uh, more idea, better understanding. Uh, we will actually discuss about the pump, especially like the pump head, pressure head, and uh, pressure difference, all these theoretical portions in the next class. So you will have a very clear understanding on on these curves again, okay, uh, how, how these curves actually uh, really work and how to interpret these curves even even more te uh, technical way. Alright, so um, until then, uh, take care and have a nice uh, weekend. Goodbye. Stay well.